Welcome. I am delighted to be here together with Rabbi Avraham Rosenblum and to share with you some of the biblical insights that reveal how the world really works. And what's so wonderful about this special opportunity that I enjoy is that we're going to focus not only on the substance, but also upon the soul. You will hear the sounds of ancient Jewish wisdom as well as the words. Thank you for joining us. Well, Rabbi, it's a great pleasure to be here with you again. What's today's special Bible topic? Well, this is terrific. We've got an opportunity today uh, to talk about something that everybody knows something about. They've made movies about it, the story of Noah mm. and the flood. The problem is that for many people, it became a legend about mythological people of a long time ago of no p contemporary relevance at all. But what we're going to do today is show how this is really an absolutely vital guidebook that you and I and all our friends need for how the world really does work. You know how when you get a new car, right there in the glove box uh, is an instruction manual, right? Now, a lot of people don't pay any attention to that, but uh, those of us who enjoy a car and expect long and reliable service, well, we, we do pay attention to that. And uh, that manufacturer's manual in the glove box is exactly how I view the Torah. In ancient Jewish wisdom, this book in front of me is the manufacturer's instruction manual. That's what it is. This is a book that shows us how the world really works. What do I mean? Well, here's one very important rule. And, and as any enthusiast of ancient Jewish wisdom like you already know, there are no superfluous verses in the whole Torah. There are no superfluous sentences. There are no superfluous words or even letters. And that means we have to look at things very, very carefully. Um, I'm going to tell you about two verses having to do with uh, the life of Noah. But uh, I'd, I'd like you to hear them in the Hebrew first and then the English. Now, I know that you probably don't know Hebrew yet, but um, you will nonetheless very much enjoy the cadence and the sound of the Lord's language. Here is one verse, and we're looking at chapter 5 in Genesis, verse 32. Vayehi noach ben chamesh me'ot shana, vayoled noach et shem et cham ve'et yafet. That's the last verse in chapter 5. Now we're looking at chapter 6, verse 10, right? Just 10 verses later. And uh, this reads, Eile vayoled noach shlosha banim. Vayoled noach shlosha banim et shem et cham ve'et yafet. Now, in English, the first verse I read to you, chapter 5, verse 32, says, um, And Noah had Shem, Cham, and Japheth when he was 500 years old. Okay. Just 10 verses later, we read, And Noah gave birth to three sons, Shem, Ham, and Japheth. Now, look, I've got to explain something to you, and, and you understand, the Bible is not meant for people with short-term memory loss. Right? It's not telling us this because you've already forgotten what went before. So why on earth would the Bible tell us that Noah had three sons, Shem, Ham, and Japheth, just 10 verses after it already told us that Noah gave birth to Shem, Ham, and Japheth? Why could that possibly be? And the answer is stunning and very significant to each and every one of you. You might be a, uh, a child, you might be a parent. You might one day be becoming a parent. Maybe you're a grandparent. But wherever you are in life, this information is valuable to you. You see, there is one very big difference between verses chapter 532 and, verse, and chapter 6, verse 10. Big difference. The big difference is that chapter 532, if you listen carefully, it just says that when he was 500 years old, Noah had Shem, Ham, and Japheth. No mention of the word son. But in chapter 6, verse 10, it says, And Noah had three sons, Shem, Ham, and Japheth. What's changed? Well, think about this. Anybody can, get, can conceive a fetus. Anybody can make it a male fetus. 50% of the time, it's going to be a male. It's just, that not, it's just not that hard to give birth to a male. I mean, as far as a man is concerned, there's not even a lot of work involved. This is really easy. But to end up with a son 
Now that's a totally different story. You see, in Hebrew, the word stone means father, son. And when we think of stones, we think of permanence. We think of buildings that are going to stand forever. In Hebrew, the word even, it means a stone. It's made up of the two words av and ven, father and son. The relationship between parents and their son is quite different from their relationship between parents and a male child that has not become a son. So how did Noah convert three people, Shem, Ham, and Yaphet, who just were born, how did he convert them into the three sons, Shem, Ham, and Japheth. Well, you have to think about what's been going on here. What's been going on here is that for 120 years, Noah has been working on the ark. By himself? No, with his three sons. And during that time, how did the population around him, how did the neighbors react? Hey, Noah, what are you doing over there? And when he told them, they were not happy. Think about it, would you if your neighbor started doing this? And then on top of that, there were moral overtones. Noah said, God is going to bring a flood because of your behavior. People didn't care for that one little bit. And there was a lot of mockery and there was a lot of antagonism and there were a lot of insults hurled. And Noah didn't stand alone. He stood with his sons, Shem, Ham, and Japheth. That is what turned them into sons. And the marvelous message of God here is that we can do this with our children as well. Don't conceal from them what you live for. Don't hide your values from them. Don't conceal your mission in life. The things you really live for, make your children part of that. Involve them in that. Give them a role to play in all of that because that is the way to turn a child into a son and a daughter. Rabbi, that's a lesson, a true lesson for all of mankind and how we should work together. Isn't it amazing? I mean, that these insights that have shaped thousands of years of Jewish national life are now available for everybody. Always amazing. And um, you know what I'd really love now? If we could uh, have some music, some of your special music, uh, that would give us all a chance to, to listen and reflect. And the, the music helps the message enter the soul. I believe and we that. Just, we just want to concentrate on that now. Be my pleasure.
Beautiful. Avram, that's exactly the sort of music I was hoping to thank hear. Thank you. Thank you very much. And, um, and, and what's great about it is you highlighted something that really is a part of today's message, which is that when you have your Bible and when you have a connection with God, you're at home wherever you are. Isn't right. that so? Yeah. Wonderful. You're always at home. Yeah, absolutely. Be together with us for the next show. We very much look forward to seeing you back right here. This is my latest book, Business Secrets from the Bible. Spiritual Strategies for Financial Abundance are the secrets that have brought my people disproportionate business success only for Jews? No, of course not. Encoded in the Bible are vast numbers of tips, tools, and techniques for making money that we Jews have successfully used for centuries. And now they are all condensed into 40 spiritual strategies for financial abundance that you and all those you love can immediately put to use in your life. Thank you for investing your time with us today and for giving us the opportunity to share with you 3,000 years of ancient Jewish wisdom presented in a way that we hope will enhance your life, enhance your faith, enhance your family, your friendships, and yes, even your finances. Thanks for being part of this. Make sure you see the next show and also please visit our website, www.rabbidaniellappin.com.